In previous session, we looked at how to find length using meter rule, measuring tape, and vernier caliper. However, there are certain lengths that are just too small to measure with these instruments precisely, such as diameter of a wire. We might be able to measure this length using vernier calipers, but the uncertainty in the reading will be high, leading to inaccuracy. For such smaller lengths, we use micrometer screw gauge simply because of their greater precision at measuring these lengths. Micrometer screw gauge may be manual or digital. The key difference between the two is the LCD display. Apart from this, the structure is largely similar in both cases. In manual instrument, the reading on both scales is noted and added to give a final instrument reading. Meanwhile, in digital instrument, the final reading is automatically displayed on the LCD display. Why is this device named micrometer screw gauge? Why not any other name? Why not megameter caliper scale or millimeter screw ruler? The name micrometer screw gauge hold various clues regarding the function of the device. The term micrometer is derived from the minimum measurement that can be measured through this device. It can measure length up to 0.01 millimeter or 0.001 centimeter. This translates to 10 to the power minus 5 meters. This can be rewritten as 10 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6. This can be rewritten as 10 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 6 meters. In other words, 10 micrometers, as micro stands for 10 to the power minus 6. The term screw refers to the principle of micrometer screw on which this device operates. This will be discussed in later section. The term gauge refers to the comparable standard in which value is obtained. Micrometer screw gauge is used to determine the diameter of a wire, which in turn is dictated by standard numbers known as standard wire gauge. Micrometer works on the principle of micrometer screw when an accurately cut single thread screw is placed in a closely fitted nut and rotated. In addition to the circular motion, there is also linear motion of the screw along the axis. The linear distance covered by the screw in one rotation is equal to the distance between consecutive threads, also known as pitch, and is always constant. In this way, the small horizontal distance moved by the screw, also known as linear distance, is amplified into larger distance, which is the rotation of the screw. This distance can be easily measured rather than the linear distance that a screw moves. Thus, micrometer is constructed in such a way that it incorporates the principle of micrometer screw. Micrometer is used to measure lengths at a greater precision than vernier caliper. We know already that it operates on the principle of micrometer screw. In the structure, we have a threaded screw and a closely fitted nut. The screw rotates and moves a small distance inside the nut. In addition, we have a U-shaped frame attached to the front end. The nut is graduated with scale markings and is known as sleeve. These readings measure the linear distance moved by the screw. This scale is known as linear scale or main scale and is fixed. At the other end of the U-shaped frame is a metallic piece called the stud or anvil. When the screw is moved forward, the anvil and screw together hold the object firmly. The screw is attached to a milled metallic head and rotates over the sleeve. The head has a scale shown by digit markings on it and is known as circular scale or thimble scale and is the moving scale. This scale has 50 digits. Note, in some instrument, the number of digits is actually 100. But such problems won't feature in your syllabus. Just to recap the structure of a typical micrometer screw gauge discussed previously. The U-shaped metallic frame attached to the linear scale, anvil, also known as stud, and the spindle. Together they hold an object firmly in place, lock nut, to prevent the screw from rotating while measuring lengths, sleeve, also known as the main scale, and is fixed. Each mark corresponds to an increment of 0.5. This will be discussed later.
thimble, also known as the moving scale. It has 50 digits, though can vary to 100 digits. This will also be discussed later. Ratchet, which is used to protect the device from unnecessary force being applied to the screw, which can damage the threading. It is also used to firmly place an object between the anvil and the spindle. We know that micrometer screw gauge has two scales, main scale and thimble scale. Main scale is fixed, while thimble scale is free to move. So when we place a wire between the spindle and anvil, the thimble scale rotates to a particular value, which is equal to the diameter of the wire. The readings on respective scales can be shown as below. In this case, the red lines represent the main scale markings, while the blue lines represent the thimble scale values. In most questions, the scales are represented by the images shown to the right. In each case, the portion marked by red represents the thimble scale, which is free to move, while the portion marked by blue represents the linear or main scale, which is fixed. We know that micrometer screw gauge has two scales, main scale and thimble scale. The total device reading, therefore, should be the sum of individual readings of both scales. Before we move further, it is important to discuss least count. Least count is the minimum value of length that can be measured by the device. In case of micrometer screw gauge, it is the hundredth millimeter, which is 0.01 millimeter, or thousandth centimeter, which is 0.001 centimeter. It is crucial that you remember both values. And in later sections, we will discuss memory aids to help you remember least count of all instruments. A reminder, thimble scale has 50 digits. In certain instruments, the thimble scale has 100 digits. This ambiguity will not hinder you, as the question will be quite clear on the digit to use for the thimble scale reading. Total instrument reading is equal to main scale reading plus thimble scale reading. In this section, we will discuss the main scale readings. Each marking on the main scale represents an increase of 0.5 to the previous value. This applies to both centimeter and millimeter scale. Main scale reading is that value on the main or fixed scale that is closest to the thimble scale. In the case below, we have scales representing micrometer screw gauge. The one marked in red represents the thimble scale, while the other represents the main scale. First, we note the position of the thimble scale represented by the red rectangle. Next, we mark the main scale reading closest to this scale and draw a line on that fixed scale value. This is marked by the green line. The next step is to determine its value. On the main scale, each marking represents an increase of 0.5 to the previous value. Therefore, the digit after 0 is 0.5. Then 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 6, and 6.5. The value 6.5 lies on our green line. This is the value closest to the thimble scale. So the main scale reading is 6.5 millimeters. In the other case below, we have scales representing micrometer screw gauge. The one marked in red represents the thimble scale, while the other represents the main scale. First, we note the position of the thimble scale, represented by red rectangle. Next, we mark the main scale reading closest to this scale and draw a line on that fixed scale value. This is marked by the green line. The next step is to determine its value. On the main scale, each marking represents an increase of 0.5 to the previous value. Therefore, the digit after 0 is 0.5. Then 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, and 5. The value 5 lies on our green line. This is the value closest to the thimble scale. So the main scale reading is 5 mm. The formula for calculating thimble scale reading is coinciding digit multiplied by the least count. 
least count is the minimum value of length that can be determined by the instrument. In case of micrometer screw gauge, it is 0.01 millimeter or 0.001 centimeter. So the value is dependent on the scale marked on the main scale. If it is in millimeter, then use 0.01. However, if the scale marked is in centimeter, then use 0.001. In later sections, we will discuss shortcuts to remember the value of least counts for all the instruments mentioned in your syllabus. The coinciding digit is that digit on the thimble scale that clearly overlaps with the main scale axis line. We know that the digit overlaps with the main scale axis line or reference line if together they form a straight line. Note, in any measurement, there will always be one coinciding digit and not more than one. In other words, there will always be one unique coinciding digit during measurement. Let's implement this knowledge to an exam level question. We first draw a horizontal line on the main scale axis. Let's represent this using a red line. This line intersects the thimble scale at a particular value. This is our coinciding digit. Next step is to determine the value of this digit. We know that this value should lie between 10 to 15. And since there are five digits between them, the value of each digit represents an increase of one to the previous value. So the digit after 10 is 11, then 12, and eventually 13. The digit 13 is our coinciding digit as it lies on the red line. Next step is to look at the scale mentioned on the sleeve. As this is in millimeter, the value of least count is 0.01 millimeter. The thimble scale reading is equal to 13 multiplied by 0.01 equals 0.13 millimeter. In second question, we will repeat the entire process. We first draw a horizontal line on the main scale axis. Let's represent this using a red line. This line intersects the thimble scale at a particular value. This is our coinciding digit. Next step is to determine the value of this digit. We know that this value should lie between 35 to 40. And since there are five digits between them, the value of each digit represents an increase of one to the previous value. So the digit after 35 is 36 and then 37. The digit 37 is our coinciding digit as it lies on the red line. Next step is to look at the scale mentioned on the sleeve. As no scale is mentioned, we will assume millimeters as most micrometer screw gauges are marked in millimeter. So the value of least count is 0.01 millimeter. The thimble scale reading is equal to 37 multiplied by 0.01 equals 0.37 millimeter. We have calculated the main scale reading and thimble scale reading individually. In order to determine the total device reading, we simply add the two together. So total device reading is the sum of main scale plus thimble scale reading. In the first case, our main scale reading was 6.5 millimeters and thimble scale reading was 0.13 millimeters. Therefore, the total device reading will be 6.5 plus 0.13 equals to 6.63 millimeters. In the next case, our main scale reading was 5 centimeter and thimble scale reading was 0.37 millimeters. Therefore, the total device reading will be 5 plus 0.37 equals 5.37 millimeter. When no object is being measured between spindle and anvil, we would expect a zero millimeter reading. This happens when the zero digit of the thimble scale matches the reference line of the main scale. Ideally, this should be the case always. However, sometimes in the given screw gauge, the zero digit of the thimble scale does not coincide with the main scale reference line, even though no length is being measured. This is because of physical degradation or mechanical faults developed over the use of device. This error is known as zero error. In the first case, we can see the zero digit of the thimble scale is below the main scale reference line. They both are highlighted by the yellow line in the image. For ease, the instrument is turned upside down with U-frame at the bottom and ratchet at the top. By inverting the micrometer, the zero digit of the thimble scale 
is to the right of the reference line on main scale. In this case, the 11 digit of the thimble scale is overlapping with the reference line of main scale. So the instrument is giving reading when it should be recording zero value. The screw gauge is measuring an extra length which must be subtracted from the observed length to determine the actual or correct value. This type of error in which zero of the thimble scale is to the right of the reference line is known as positive zero error. And since it must be subtracted, the correction is negative. As the 11 digit of the thimble scale coincides with the reference line, the value is 11 multiplied by 0 0.001 centimeter. This value is subtracted to obtain the correct value. Conversely, in screw gauge B, the zero digit of the thimble scale is to the left of the reference line of main scale. In this case, there is a difference of 10 digits. The device is measuring less distance than the actual length. The value must be added to the observed length. This type of error is a negative zero error. And since it must be added, the correction is positive. In this case, the thimble scale stops at 90 division, even though it should have stopped at zero. So there is a shortfall of 10 digits. So the zero error is 10 multiplied by 0 0.001 centimeter. This value is added to obtain the correct value to account for the shortfall of 10 digits. So before taking any reading, micrometer screw gauge must be checked for zero error. If it is found that zero error exists, we must then adjust the device reading for positive or negative zero error.